are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. your name by night God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy holy the universe declares your majesty Good evening again. Thank you for, for bearing with my errors, and, and thank you very much for, for saving the day, for getting the right songs in there. My name is Jansen. I'm a worship leader here. I make the presentation. Sometimes I mess them up and put the wrong songs in there. They're all good songs. I just was going to sing a different one. If you're interested in this evening's order of worship, which now I hope, I hope that's right, too, it's on our website at flameoffaithumc.org. Just click on, is there a button that says order of worship? Was that, okay, there's, there's still a button that says order of worship. Click on that. It takes you to a basic, like, skeleton outline of the service. And if you're interested in, in the rest of all the details, especially tonight, a night where we have, we celebrate Holy Communion, and there are some things to say and, and parts to follow, that'll all be in that PDF. So uh, I'm, I'm all for downloading it. I don't think I put any works of art or anything um, extra like that, but all, all the required stuff is in there. 
Also, if you are here, for those who are here in the sanctuary, we have a visual order of worship. It's kind of like the same thing, but instead of having words what each section is, it has a, an, a picture or a, some kind of image, an icon. And there's also uh, just the, that basic skeleton outline is printed out. I put a couple of them back there. So one way or another, you can follow along however you choose. Also, everything is on the screens too. And for people who are here in the sanctuary, if you would, there are clipboards down the center aisle right in the pews. And if you'd fill out a section on that, those help us so we, we know who's here and we can keep you informed about all the things that are happening. Like I said, Holy Week, we got all those different days and different things happening. So uh, it's good to, to know in advance so you can plan accordingly. There's also, also a section for prayer requests. If there are things that that you want us to help to pray with you or pray for you, um, you can write those on there. And for people who are watching online, if you go down below this video into the description, there is a link that takes you to like a digital clipboard. It's like a digital kind of sign in. It has the same basic stuff. And there's also, as well, there's a, you know, a section for prayer requests. I think that's all. Now I'd like to transition us into a time of prayer. We'll start with the time of silent prayer. I'll continue with the pastoral prayer. And then we'll join together for the Lord's Prayer. The words for the Lord's Prayer are on the screen and in that PDF file. Um, it's just one version of the Lord's Prayer. Um, so whatever version you're used to, whatever language you're used to praying it in, please feel free to pray it ho however you're used to. And again, if you have prayer requests, please write those on the clipboard or on the digital sign-in, or if you're watching this after the, the live broadcast, if you're watching it after that, you could leave a, a prayer request in the comments for the video if you're comfortable with that too. Or contact us, that's on the screen, phone, email. All right, let us pray. Lord, our God, victim of violence on a cross, look with compassion on everyone who was involved with and who was affected by these recent horrific acts of violence all over the world. Um, in Sacramento and San Francisco, California, in Dallas, Texas, in Buffalo, New York, in Norfolk, Virginia, in Colorado Springs, Colorado, in Monroe and Shreveport, Louisiana, in Shelby, North Carolina, and in Bucha and all across the Ukraine. Comfort those who are traumatized by these horrendous events. Wrap your, everla your, your everlasting arms around those who mourn. Heal those whose hearts and minds are terrorized. Strengthen the medical personnel who minister to the wounded. Protect those who risk their lives for the safety of others. Calm all whose memories of violence are triggered by these atrocities. Bring the perpetrators of this violence to your justice of repentance and redemption and deal tenderly with their confused family and friends. Here are cries of lament as we seek to understand the incomprehensible and guard us from the evils of violence in any form. Through Christ we pray as he taught us. Our God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we come giving of ourselves through our, through our time, our, our gifts and talents, and our tithes and offerings. You can give through the website, flameoffaithumc.org slash donate. 
You can give through the Vanco mobile app. Just search for Flame of Faith United Methodist Church. You can give by paper check. The address for that is on the screen. And if you're here in the sanctuary, there is an offering plate there that you can give to you can give through when you come up for communion. Now join me in a, a prayer of thanksgiving over tonight's offering. God, as we bring our gifts this day, we do so in the humble gratitude and recognition that any and all blessings in our life come as your gift of grace. We pray in the name of your greatest gift, Jesus, our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus, I've forgotten the words that you have spoken. Promises that burn within my heart have now grown dim. With a doubting heart, I follow the paths of earthly ways dumb. Forgive me for my unbelief, renew the fire again. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. built an altar where I worship things of men. I have taken journeys that have drawn me far from you. Now I am returning to your mercies ever flowing. Pardon my transgressions, help me love you again. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me. to know you and your tender mercies like a river of forgiveness ever flowing without end I bow my heart before you in the goodness of your presence your grace forever shining like a beacon in the night Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me. Christ have mercy. 
mercy, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy on me. Good evening again, everyone. Thank you, Jansen and Billy, for starting us off in song. Uh, what a beautiful song. We continue in our uh, Lenten focus on building up our souls, on connecting to all around us and building those foundations up. We've got uh, just a couple more weeks worth of Lent events. Tonight, we are working on the uh, um, spiritual discipline of confession. And so, somebody is going to have to confess to a murder. Murder. Okay. It's a murder mystery night. It's going to be fun. If you were here on Sunday, close your mouth. I see you. Uh, tomorrow morning, we will do our Wednesday, or our... Would you like a microphone? No? Okay, just checking. Tomorrow night, or tomorrow morning will be Thursday morning, because it is Wednesday today, where we will be walking at the Rested Center. An exciting time had by all. And our devotions, of course, continue. Uh, signing up for camp. Uh, so one of the important things about getting signed up for camp is at the end of April, there is a price increase for camp. So if you are hoping to get signed up for camp, um, there is a uh, increase at the end of April. So you want to sign up before that. Our Flame Campers uh, promo code will be there the whole time. Also, if you are able, any and all uh, ages are welcome at our uh, retreat at Wesley Acres Camp on May 6th and 7th. It's a Friday and Saturday. Uh, we'll have a time of retreat and worship and um, prayer, as well as a whole lot of fun. And then on Saturday, we'll do some work around the camp to get the camp itself ready for our campers over the summer. So that'll be May 6th and 7th. Here in the building, there is a sign-up sheet in the hallway. Otherwise, you can let me know online. Uh, through our sign-in uh, sheet. You can use the clipboards. You can send me a text. Um, basically, any way you normally communicate with us, you can sign up through that as well. June 19th through 23rd, um, all youth families, unless I messed up, should have gotten an email uh, from me letting me know your interest in uh, participating in the impact event. Uh, any youth are welcome from uh, current 7th graders through 12th graders. Uh, if you are um, wanting to bring a friend, let me know. We're, I'm trying to figure out our numbers here at the church, even as we are figuring out the whole event. So that is June 19th through 23rd. This Sunday, will, there will be pancakes. Even if you don't stay for worship, you should come for pancakes. Um, pancake breakfast on Palm Sunday from 9.30 to 10.30. At 10.30, there will be worship, and the Flame Kids will be singing. So uh, looking around the families in this room, y'all should be there. Uh, those of you at home, you can join in or uh, uh, hear us on uh, the online uh, worship as well. You can also uh, bring supplies or uh, pick up uh, treats at our bake sale. Uh, the, the proceeds from the bake sale will go to West Fargo Eats. It's a food pantry that we're connecting with um, through Lutheran Church of the Cross. All right. And then next week is Holy Week. 
So that means on Sunday is Palm Sunday, we will have our regular events, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, although our Wednesday night Lent event is a dance party. Woo! I've got some good dance moves to show you all. I learned them from my bobblehead Jesus. It came with a dance explanation card. Thank you to our uh, Christmas kids, or our youth Christmas exchange, where I received a dance card of uh, dances from Jesus. It's going to be exciting. Okay, so that's next Wednesday. Uh, I think there's good food next Wednesday, too. Alfredo, chicken Alfredo for um, dinner, worship. We're going to be talking about worship, and uh, then we're going to have the dance party. Next Thursday will be our Monday Thursday service, which will be focused on our spiritual disciplines again, as well as uh, Good Friday is a uh, service focused on uh, the cross and the crucifixion of Christ. The youth are helping out with that. Uh, Jansen and I are, are and the youth are, are leading that one. And then Sunday morning on Easter Sunday, we will celebrate uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ sunrise service in the parking lot at 6 30 a.m we'll have it set up so you can be in your cars if you want you can be outside if you want um, jansen will probably hide in the building to play his guitar and i'll go stand out in the cold i don't know we'll see what this look, looks like so that uh, sunrise service is at 6 30 and then a regular easter service at 10 30. And if you would like to help decorate the sanctuary, uh, you let us know, grab an Easter flower form, which is in the hallway here, or send us an email as well. On April 28th, so we've had some fun uh, kind of additions to our, under, our uh, lineup for our Neurodiversity and Faith event. Uh, we have three speakers. Uh, one is uh, Hadley. Uh, Dalsy? Dalsa. Dalsa. Uh, a student at Concordia College. And uh, one is um, John David Birdall, who uh, is uh, a local artist and teacher. Um, and then uh, Tiff Dorfman, a former intern here at Flame of Faith. Uh, those three are going to be telling their stories about how uh, their brains help them connect to God in good and difficult ways. And then we're going to have a time of discussion and questions. So this event, the exciting thing about this event is it is uh, meant to be for any and all, and um, not just here at Flame of Faith, but for the entire community. So if you have someone in your life who you think doesn't quite think they belong in a church uh, because they might be a little loud, might have a hard time listening, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my ADHD son just like blushed as we talked about this. Uh, so everyone is welcome to hear and to listen and to learn a little bit and to teach us a little bit more. So this is an event specifically to reach out to the community. Uh, you can share the Facebook event. You can share all of these things um, or just invite your friends we are asking everyone uh, to get tickets. Now, the tickets are free, uh, but we're asking you to go to, uh, you can go to our website to find the link. You can find it on the Facebook event uh, to get tickets for it so that we know who, how many are coming. There is a meal that is uh, connected with it, and if you'd like to be here for the meal, um, make sure you get a ticket that says meal, and then uh, we'll know how much food to cook. So that is April 28th. The meal is at 6, and the event is at 7. VBS uh, will be June... I can read, I promise. July 10th through 13th. We will see how much, whether or not I can read here in a minute. All right. So over the last few weeks, uh, as I've said, we have worked through some of the ways that we practice and develop our faith through the ancient spiritual disciplines of silence and solitude, of movement, of surrendering to God, of fasting and preparation, of guidance and mentoring from others. 
Today we look into another ancient practice, that of confession. To speak aloud the harm, the hurt, and sometimes even the evil parts of our hearts. We at Flame of Faith are not what I would call a high church congregation, and especially our Wednesday night group, as we wander, as we move, and as we make fun of the pastor from the pews, we aren't quite a formal place. And so we don't really include uh, regular confession as a part of worship, except in our time of communion. In a few um, minutes, we'll get to that. And in truth, That only happened in the last few years as I'm not entirely sure how we got on the topic, but Jansen and I were talking one day and we said, we should have confession during communion. And so we have. (laughs) And that works for us. A sense that in some ways we have liturgy in these moments and yet we have this openness and conversation and uh, a sense of what I would call um, prairie worship. Now, I know that I'm making this turn up. However, uh, worship out on the prairie tends to be in small churches around the Midwest, tends to be a little bit more free-flowing than some of the older churches and cities. It shifts like the wind. Now, Today is one of those days that the wind is not trying to shift, but instead to knock the whole building over. Those of you who are at home, I kept looking up during our prayers, thinking somebody had come through the doors, but no, it was just the wind knocking against the building. But our scripture today is one we often read during Advent, as we prepare for the coming of Christ. And so um, this is the story of John the Baptist, and his call to repentance. I think we even talked about this scripture during Advent, but that's okay, this is different. So from Matthew chapter three, verses one through six. We got the right scripture? In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. And then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and in the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Here ends the reading. Now, I really want to know if our cooks could make honey and locusts a thing. No? Just staring at me. I don't think it's going to happen. We'll, we'll, go, we'll continue with the chicken Alfredo next week instead. As I said, this scripture is often read at the time of Advent. As we seek to prepare to be ready for the baby Jesus, But in truth, John the Baptist calls us all right after this, a brood of vipers. Anybody remember that um, phrase? Right after talking about a time of repentance, John kind of calls us out, reminding us that we are not actually perfect. And so as we reread this scripture, in the sense of understanding that the regular and dedicated connection to faith in our daily lives we have to understand the importance of regular confession. Now, Jansen has a a picture up here of of a woman on a a witness stand, it looks like. A murderer, oh my, is this a famous murderer? Okay. Cool, I mean, I assumed by the hat. But that's not the kind of confession I'm talking about. We're not confessing big crimes. And truthfully, when I say the word confession, this is one thought we have. Confessing on the witness stand, you can't handle the truth, angry lawyers, all the things. Or, on the other hand, we think of small cubbies and screens behind which a priest sits. 
And while I might appreciate the regularity and importance of confession in the Roman Catholic tradition, that practice is not one that we are going to adopt. Neither is having someone stand in front of everybody and trying to get them to confess their sins. So, also not going to happen. I'm not going to ask you to come whisper your sins to me. I don't necessarily want to know all of your sins in particular. That is, in fact, a conversation between us and those we've hurt, especially the ways that we've hurt God. So it is regularly a conversation between us and God. So what does it mean to truly confess as a spiritual practice? Richard Foster explains confession like this. Confession is the spiritual discipline that allows us to enter into the grace and mercy of God in such a way that we experience forgiveness and healing for the sins and sorrows of the past. Both forgiveness and healing are a part or are involved in confession. Forgiveness positions us in a right relationship toward God, healing frees us from the domination of our present by our past. Confession is truly unlocking the hard parts within us. It's a hard step for some of us. When we're taught to keep everything so close to our chest, just pretend that everything's fine, everything's fine, no big deal. If you don't admit that something is wrong, you can't be held accountable. It's the playbook of our world. It's every politician ever. It's a playbook. Never admit to doing wrong. But that's not our playbook. That's not how we as Christians are called to live throughout the Bible. From the beginning, we have understood that confession of our sins, of our desires, of our struggles, even of our joys and gratitude, it's all a part of opening our souls to the beauty that is God. When we hide parts of ourselves, whether through shame or fear, it simmers inside us. It festers in our souls a bit. When we hide the crappy parts, they start to take over. So we lean into honesty and integrity. We see the good in the world and we confess that. Yes, we too are good. Yes, we too have value. We confess, we admit that. We matter. And so when we confess the good, it's easier to confess the hard parts, the fears, the pain, the struggle. We open ourselves to the reality of accepting help or at least the reminder that we are not alone. And when we confess the parts where shame threatens to take over, because so often the hidden things are the places that we get ashamed of. When we confess the petty things, none of us are ever petty. None of you have ever cut anyone off in traffic yelled at the other parents in the pickup line, (laughs) held in a grudge for a mistake, gotten mad at your sibling for something they did three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. These are the little petty things that we don't like to admit. We let go of the little ways, but when we let go of the little ways that shame can build up, in us, we can work to do better. And often there's something bigger for a lot of us, where we have actively or even passively harmed another human. Those confessions are often big and messy. Those confessions are so wrapped up in a deep need for forgiveness. We seek forgiveness. But sometimes, and this is the hard part, sometimes when we confess to another and we seek their forgiveness, they don't forgive us. It is not their obligation to forgive just because you have confessed. And that's, that's okay, but it's hard. Confession in itself is an act of deep faith. To say aloud, to say to God, and to say to one another that I have hurt others, that I am not perfect, that I have failed, 
that I have hurt you? These are deeply faithful statements because they are grounded in the trust we have in Christ. We are and we will be forgiven by God. And so we step into the deep work of repentance, that lifelong work of seeking to live like Christ. Again and again and again, we turn toward Christ. In a moment in our worship service, we're going to speak a, a, a prayer of confession, the same one we say at Christ's table each month. And so I invite you to let this be a beginning to seek that within we'd wish to hide and to set it at Christ's feet. For those of you who are coming forward to the table today, to Christ's table in this room, as you receive the bread and the cup, I invite you to leave behind that sin and that shame. For those of you who are at home, I invite you to take a moment and to to write it down or, or to take and set those emotions somewhere else in the room that you are in before you receive your own communion. As you take that time to set aside and confess our sins so that we may receive Christ so much more freely, Because at Christ's table, perfection is not required. But we don't want to lie to God. We don't want to pretend that we're perfect because we are not. And so when we come forward to God, we come with an honest truth of who we are. Not perfect. Sometimes kind of mean. Oftentimes petty but definitely loved and welcomed and accepted at God's table. So I invite you all to join me at Christ's table today. Our table of Holy Communion. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess together our sin before God and one another. Join with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And yet hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. You bid your people, faithful people, cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast that renewed by your word and sacraments, ferment in prayer and works of justice, works of mercy, we may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to redeem the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant being born in our likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took upon himself our sin and death and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. And by his baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take or drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I now invite you to come and to receive the bread and cup of Christ this day and always. confess bowing here I find my rest without you I fall apart you're the one that guides my heart Lord I need Oh, God, how I 
need you to teach my song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay Lord I need you oh I need you every hour I need you my one defense my righteousness oh God how I need you Lord I need My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Please stand and hear this evening's benediction. As we go from this place, let us do so in the knowledge that God hears the silent confessions of our hearts and the whispers of our souls, and we are forgiven. Amen.